Well, welcome, everyone. It's glad to have uh, you all here. Um, we're incredibly excited to announce one of the biggest lithium refineries in the world and a location that will be able to, we, we expect, produce uh, lithium for about a million vehicles and produce more battery-grade uh, lithium than uh, the rest of North American refining capacity combined. There is no greater entrepreneur in the entire world than Elon Musk. We're proud he calls Texas home. Elon Musk and Tesla are part of the Texas economic juggernaut. In today's episode of Tesla is just a car company. Tesla unveils their new car factory, not a lithium refinery in Texas because they're just a car company and they don't have any technology that any other company that also produces vehicles doesn't already have. At least that's what some of the dimwits on Wall Street have told me. And they're obviously right because they're the experts. Now, trolling of potatoes aside, this is a very important milestone in Tesla's history. Tesla is taking control of their own destiny. Not only that, but Tesla low-key leaks a few very compelling insights about some of their future goals and ambitions. By the way, how f***ing badass does the Cybertruck look? And just a quick note, wanted to say a massive thank you to everybody supporting the channel by subscribing over on Twitter. It's officially been three weeks since I launched my Twitter subscriptions and we're now approaching 1,000 subscribers. For those who don't know, I'm posting loads of exclusive video content to my Twitter subscribers that you'll find nowhere else. In addition, I'm also posting early access to my daily YouTube videos to Twitter subscribers. So if you want to see them as soon as they're available, the only place to do that is over on Twitter, or you can wait and watch them here later. And on that note, I posted another exclusive video to my Twitter subscribers today regarding an EV startup currently circling the drain and an exclusive video available to my Patreon supporters on the most heinous criminal act in Toyota's history. And that's saying something. So if you want more exclusive content and don't want to miss a thing, click the links in the pinned comment, subscribe over on Twitter, and also join Patreon where you'll find loads of exclusive content. You know, it's great to see uh, what companies like Tesla uh, is doing. You know, they've been a leader in the EV space now for such a long time. Excuse me, that's not what President Biden told me. He said that General Motors led and mattered. They electrified the whole industry. Can somebody please get the Ministry of Truth onto this lying woman? Because she obviously does not know what she's talking about. Uh, and now they're being uh, an amazing leader on building out the clean energy supply chain here in this country, uh, at, at, which is uh, what we're going to be seeing more and more of uh, as we move out with uh, the, the bipartisan infrastructure law and other incentives uh, put forth uh, through our Invest in America agenda. And, of course, we would not be here but for uh, the vision, uh, the hard work, and the commitment of Elon Musk and Tesla. Give it up for Tesla and Elon Musk. Elon brought his Gigafactory here, and he liked it so much, he brought Tesla here, and then the boring company here, SpaceX is here. Where's Neuralink? Part, part, Neuralink is partly here. That means that the future of Neuralink will be right here in the Lone Star State, and, and, and so much more. And listen, there, there is no greater entrepreneur in the entire world than Elon Musk. We're proud he calls Texas home. Some facts have been spat there by the governor of Texas. Disturbingly, I'm actually impressed to hear somebody, a governor in the United States, anyone in US politics whatsoever, giving Elon Musk the credit he rightly deserves. It seems far more common that due to political motivations, nefarious incentives, bribes, corruption, vested interests, and so on, it's much more common to hear those in the US political system attack Elon Musk. In fact, may I remind you of how California treated Elon Musk. Remember this bitch? Wait, I shouldn't call her a bitch, should I? Sorry, let's do that again. Remember this cunt? Former assemblywoman in California, 10th of May, 2020, tweets out, fuck Elon Musk. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a human being more accurately described as a pile of excrement. Elon Musk responded, message received. Next minute, Moves Tesla headquarters to Texas. Boring companies in Texas. Neuralink's expanding in Texas. Tesla's building lithium refineries in Texas. Round of applause to this silly motherfucker. This is what I'm talking about when I refer to politicians refusing to give Elon Musk the credit he deserves. There's an endless example of this. Almost universally on the left. Shout out to the Democrats. Elon's a greedy billionaire. Elon doesn't pay enough taxes. Blah, 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 blah. Despicable. This is called karma. Message received, all right. There goes your economic activity, pushing out the greatest entrepreneur of our generation with shit like this. Well done, you fucking moron. Elon Musk and Tesla are part of the Texas economic juggernaut. Um, and as you can see, we've got the uh, earth, moving, earth moving equipment already here, so we're going to begin construction immediately. This is what we call Tesla speed. They don't fuck around. Typically, you find a groundbreaking ceremony. It's a gigantic fucking wank festival 
where nothing actually happens aside from a bunch of people posing for photos with shovels. Look in the background during this clip. They're already, already beginning construction. They're doing the groundwork now. There's equipment now. This is happening in a hurry. And unlike many companies who use these kind of opportunities as pure optics, look at us, we're investing in the community, jobs, 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 jobs. Meanwhile, it takes them 12 months to even start breaking ground. Tesla are intent on building this lithium refinery ASAP. This matters. Um, we're aiming to uh, finish construction uh, next year and then reach uh, hopefully full production about a year later. So give or take, Tesla aiming to have this lithium refinery fully operational and fully ramped up into 2025. Maybe early 26. They ain't messing around. That's that's a which is very, this is extremely fast by you know normal normal standards. But that's how we do things. Facts. So, so as, as I mentioned earlier, the the capability we're aiming for is approximately a million vehicles worth of uh, of battery grade lithium. Um, but the, the potential is there to expand beyond that number uh, as needed. But this is a very useful clue to Tesla investors. Roughly a million units of capacity in terms of the lithium today. Tesla Fremont, let's call it 600, 650,000 vehicles of capacity per year. Austin currently ramping up, just taking a guess, probably a quarter of a million vehicles per year, roughly, at current run rates. If we look at Berlin, it's around that point. Austin a tiny bit behind. So Tesla a little under 1 million vehicles of capacity in the US as I record this. Seems pretty likely that Tesla's going to be producing all the lithium they need for their US produced vehicles at this refinery. Key note there, they're building this with a capacity for future expansion. Remember when they announced the Berlin Gigafactory and some plans leaked online showing that ultimately there would be four stages, each about half a million vehicles per year. Stage one of Berlin, looking like half a million vehicles of capacity. Then stage two, another half million. And stage three and four, another half million each, taking the total to about two million. Expect something similar from this lithium refinery as Austin ramps up. And again, it's important to understand that Tesla are now taking control of their destiny. They'll go as far up or down the supply chain as necessary. They've identified a bottleneck. Elon's been begging probably for the better part of a year, maybe two years. Hey guys, uh, lithium refinery, license to print money, please. Some people, do it. Next minute, well, uh, no one's doing it or they're not doing enough. Therefore, we're going to have to do it ourselves. Oh, well. I'm sure getting into the lithium refining business was not on Tesla's list of priorities, but it has become a necessity. This is a leading indicator of their ambitions in terms of scale and more importantly, how far ahead of the so-called competition they are. Guess what's going to end up happening? Either Tesla's competition goes bankrupt, starts trying to build their own lithium refineries, or more likely realizes, ah, f*** that. Uh, hey Tesla, can we start buying some of your lithium? Thank you. Don't be surprised if Tesla ultimately ends up supplying lithium to other automotive manufacturers a few years from now. Um, we intend to continue to use uh, uh, suppliers of lithium, so it's not that Tesla will do, do all of it. But we thought uh, it's important to address what we think is, uh, as we look ahead a few years, a fundamental choke point in the advancement of electric vehicles is the availability of battery-grade lithium. Um, and lithium ore itself uh, for mining is actually quite common. So lithium is, is, is actually a very common element on Earth. It's present uh, basically in every country. So it's, it's not that there's a shortage of lithium uh, ore to mine, uh, but there is a shortage of, uh, of, of really heavy industry uh, refinement of, of lithium to, to battery grade. Speculation alert. Since lithium is everywhere and Tesla's building factories everywhere, what are the odds that in the future, Tesla will announce more lithium refineries everywhere they currently have factories and or at all of their future factory locations? Something to consider. And, and battery grade lithium uh, actually has to be extremely uh, precise, uh, ultra pure, because if you have any impurities uh, in the lithium, it causes degradation of the battery. So the purity requirements are, are, are extremely high. Um, and uh, we've, we've got a number of innovations that we think will be quite effective in the a refining of lithium that uh, haven't been done before. So do you guys remember that time, 2022, when Tesla did this whole battery invest today and then they unveiled a new form factor for lithium ion batteries? That was better than anything the entire battery industry itself had come up with. And now the entire battery industry is adopting Tesla's 4680 form factor. Remember when that happened? Of course, Tesla is still just a car company, but that was a curious thing for just a car company to do to invent a better battery form factor than the entire battery industry themselves. That's kind of awkward. These very cells now are in some of Tesla's production vehicles being sold to customers. But of course, they are just a car company because the Wall Street analysts told me. This is obviously another example of Tesla just being a car company. How do I know? Well, obviously, if they're just a car company, there's no way they'd be inventing new ways of refining lithium that the lithium refining industry hasn't already come up with because that would indicate that maybe Tesla's not just a car company. But that would contradict the statements from the experts on Wall Street who keep saying that Tesla's just a car company and valuing them like a car company and explaining why the stock's overpriced because they're just a car company. 
Moving on. Happy to run through it. My name is Turner Caldwell. I lead our battery raw material and recycling efforts at, at Tesla. So speaking to some of the innovation that we're going to be pursuing on site, the conventional process, and I won't get too into the weeds, um, but it's heavy. It's a heavy sulfuric acid consumer. It's a heavy sodium hydroxide consumer. And as a result, the byproducts that are produced from that conventional process are, are challenging to manage. You end up with a lot of sodium sulfate that no one really wants. Um, here, what we're going to be using are much more inert reagents. We'll be consuming soda ash, sodium carbonate, very common industrial chemical. We'll be consuming lime, again, very industrial, very common industrial chemical. And it's a much more direct route that consumes 20% less energy all in. It consumes uh, reagents that are 60% less cost, uh, costly. Um, and, uh, and all in, the, the production cost is around 30% lower uh, on a unit, unit cost basis. So, we are listening. 30% lower unit cost, not 3%, 30%. This is the same company who already has an unassailable cost advantage producing electric vehicles. What happens if you extend an already unassailable cost advantage? Any, any ideas? Oh, I don't know what that means. Certainly doesn't mean that Tesla can keep on driving the cost of their vehicles down while maintaining industry-leading profit margins. Because again, the experts on Wall Street are telling me that's not possible. Just something to ponder. 30% cheaper, less cost. They already have an unassailable cost advantage. I'm sure it's nothing. And Tesla's so-called competition will be fine. Just like morbid obesity is healthy and beautiful. And the way to fight racism is with racism. Well, in fact, we're looking at 30% fewer process steps in this refinery than a typical refinery while still achieving what we need to uh, to, to uh, hit our, our cathode uh, quality and performance targets. Can you guys remember some guy who obviously doesn't know what he's doing, doesn't know how to run a company, doesn't understand anything about anything. What's his name? Elon something or other. That guy years ago when he said the best process is no process. The best part is no part. I think Drew here just explained that Tesla's deleted 30% of the processes involved in lithium refinement. It seems like that philosophy of the best process is no process is actually something that Tesla themselves have completely embodied. Kind of like when Elon Musk says something, he actually means what he says. The, the most efficient form of lithium to use is lithium hydroxide instead of lithium. We're getting a little technical here, but lithium hydroxide instead of lithium carbonate. But uh, what a lot of um, uh, current industry refining things will do is they'll convert it to lithium hydroxide, then convert it to lithium carbonate, then convert it back to lithium hydroxide. That's what we mean by dig the ditch, fill the ditch, dig it again. Yeah. So we want to st stop that yeah. and just, just go straight to high purity lithium hydroxide. Um, and a couple of points about you know, this location. It, it really is an ideal location for um, uh, us to, to have this lithium refinery both because of the strong community support, but also the talent base that's in Corpus Christi in, the, in, in oil and gas refining actually is, is very applicable to what we're doing here. Uh, it's close to Austin. Uh, there's a really good deep water port so we can bring in uh, the spodumene, which is the rock input uh, to this refinery from uh, you know, all over North America through an easy path. And it's also directly on rail. Um, so we can also bring in the rock and the, send the outgoing product via rail. So truly an awesome site with a uh, fantastic community support. Can't thank you enough. Um, and really excited to get this project in motion, indeed. Yeah, and the, um, as we look forward into the future, obviously day one, it's designed for this spodumene concentrate. It's from hard rock mines. But as we start to have recycled batteries coming back, the, the factory is designed to be feed flexible. And so we'll be actually processing lithium out of black mass, uh, as well as from brine and clay operations that are also ramping up in North America. And so as we, as we view this site as uh, having a major focus on regionalizing the lithium supply chain, uh, it's all about being feed flexible and taking advantage of all of those feeds, including manufacturing scrap and end of life batteries. Yep. So a virtuous circle of battery materials in North America for North American factories. Really excited to uh, set, set that you know, agenda in motion, both in Austin and here in, in Corpus Christi today. So this is a huge day for Tesla, an important day for Tesla stock investors. And of course, what do you think the stock's going to do? And how do you think the Wall Street stock analysts will react to this lithium refinery? Oh, what, the, what, what, what are they wasting money? Why are they doing that? That's not their job. They're a car company. They need to advertise instead of building the f***ing lithium. What are they doing? You're doing it wrong, Tesla. Of course, I'm being a little bit facetious, but not as much as you might think. This is a window into not only how far ahead of the so-called competition Tesla is, how vertically integrated the company is, how ambitious they are. But on the flip side, this is also an insight into how completely and utterly f***ed Tesla's so-called competition truly are. Of course, this won't be immediately evident to most investors, most analysts, and most in the finance media. But consider this another flag planted in the ground toward Tesla's total, complete and utter domination of the automotive market 
throughout this decade and beyond. In conclusion, Tesla is just a car company. And if you disagree with me, you might have a brain. And while we're on the subject of having a brain and more to the point, having a brain that actually works and actually using your brain that actually works, Athletic Greens AG1 has given me a massive meaningful boost in energy, allowing me to do a lot more every day, including using my brain more and using my body more. I highly recommend you guys and girls check it out. Athletic Greens AG1 is an excellent way to fill in nutritional gaps. It's got 75 high quality vitamins, minerals and whole food source nutrients, plus prebiotics and probiotics and digestive enzymes and adaptogens to help you deal with stress. Plus, if you click the link in the pinned comment or head to athleticgreens.com slash SMR, you can get yourself a one year free supply of vitamin D3 and K2. But don't take my word for it. Here's what some of you guys and girls have to say. AG1 has changed my life. I was, as you described, treating myself like a circus, ate like trash, rarely exercised, used alcohol as a stress crutch, cannabis also. AG1 is what gave me the kick in the ass, got me back to the gym, motivated me to do more for myself, family, my business, etc. Keep doing what you do. Now, I know there's some skeptics, the same kind of people who think Elon Musk is a fraud reading this going, what do you thought? There's no way that's possible, bro. It must be a placebo effect. Believe it or not, this is a recurring theme. If you give your body everything it needs to feel and perform its best, including having a lot more energy, you'll need ways to use that energy. For me personally, that includes more exercise, moving my body more, more social activity, and more cognitively demanding tasks, including producing a fuck ton of exclusive content over on Twitter and on Patreon, plus my daily YouTube uploads. The proof's in the pudding. On to another testimonial from a viewer of this channel. SMR, you asked me to provide feedback on AG1. Here it is. It has helped with mental acuity, stamina, and intestinal waste management. Uh, can't read between the lines. It certainly helps with regularity and digestion. That's what the digestive enzymes are for. It has also dramatically reduced my cravings for sugar. You guys need to stop eating sugar. It's fucking poison. I'm 50, 5'9", and overweight, aka a fat motherfucker. I think that's a technical term for overweight, isn't it? Is it fat motherfucker or obese? I can't remember. I average 100 hours a week in the West Texas oil fields as a safety supervisor. Jesus Christ, dude. No wonder you're struggling to keep your weight under control. 100 hours a week. Brutal. It has helped me lose weight. It is not an appetite suppressant. It can help fat people suppress cravings and motivation to be healthier is critical for changing your diet. Love you, brother. Again, this is a great point. It's something people really don't seem to grasp. If you have more energy, everything becomes easier. It's like turning on easy mode for life. A few years ago, before I was taking AG1, my health was trash. I was struggling to get through the day, had afternoon fatigue. The last thing I wanted to do was either use my brain or move my body. Didn't have the energy. Now, my biggest struggle every day is figuring out ways to use that energy. I'm exercising way more, doing a lot more with my friends and family, and of course, my work output has increased substantially. And you can fact check me. Check out the average length of my videos I was posting to YouTube three years ago. Need I say more? And one final testimonial. Love this one. Okay, here's the deal for me with this AG1 shit. I'm 41 years old and not the type to eat, drink, smoke, or sleep healthy, so I was skeptical. That being said, here's what I experienced. Day one, meh. Day two, afternoon fatigue was about 45 minutes late. Day three, zero afternoon fatigue. Day four, zero afternoon fatigue plus extra energy. Day five, again, zero afternoon fatigue plus energy. Wondering, what the fuck, really? See, this is the thing, right? The results for many people are just almost too good to be true. This, this is the same experience I had. My afternoon fatigue just vanished out of nowhere. I'm like, wait, what the fuck? Why am I not tired in the afternoons anymore? Surely, it's not that AG1, is it? Turns out it was. Day six and seven, same thing. Day eight, same thing. Plus, I had the want to get things done around the house that I normally would slack off and not get done. Again, the point, extra energy, you'll need to use it, you'll find ways to use it. Day 9, 10, and 11, and today is day 12. I fucking love it. So however you managed to get me to buy it, I'm so glad you did. Thank you so much, SMR. It really changed me so far. Guys, this shit really works. Just try it. By the way, this is the reason I continue to relentlessly promote AG1. A lot of people get real fucking mad in the comments. Oh my god, snake oil salmon sold out. Oh my god, he's a scammer. This is fraud. But Constantly... I'm pretty sure everyone making these comments is also currently short Tesla stock. I'm not particularly concerned about people having a negative perception, those folks suffering from small brain syndrome, still living in my bum's basement syndrome, etc., writing mean comments, claiming AG1's a scam or it doesn't work. I mean, bro, when I get feedback like this, this is what keeps me going. And remember, there is a 90-day money-back guarantee. There's nothing to lose here. Just try this stuff for a month, and if you don't get these results, get your money back. See, it's a literal no-brainer. It's an IQ test at this point in time. Testimonial after testimonial after testimonial like this. Get your money back if it doesn't work. Just try it for a month and if it doesn't work, get your money back. Today's the day. It's finally time. Be like this guy who was a massive skeptic, but finally, after a thousand promotions in a row, caved in, tried AG1 and has results like this. Head to athleticgreens.com slash SMR or click the link at the pinned comment and please let me know how you're feeling in a few weeks time. Now, if you'll excuse me, 
Time to put my extra energy to good use. I'll be recording some more exclusive content for Patreon and my Twitter subscribers. So click the links in the pinned comment, see you over on Twitter and or Patreon, and don't forget to grab your AG1. Love ya.